Happy Soil Saturday, and today is June 1st, and we're gonna go on a June garden tour. It's been a bit of a wet and cold spring so far, but nonetheless, I'm gonna share with you five things that are exciting me in the garden, three flops or fails that are happening right now in the garden for me, and one change that I'm going to make for next season. And the first thing that is exciting me are my tomatoes. Really, really happy with where they're at. And in this bed right in front of me, these are all cherry tomatoes. So I've planted 16 sweet millions in this bed. And in the bed right behind me, I planted one row of early girl tomatoes. And the final row is really just whatever else I had left over and growing. So I don't even know what all is in that bed at the moment. And there's kind of two things about this setup that I'm really excited about. The first are the trellises. And what I think is so cool about these is that I actually use the bolt holes in my raised beds to drill directly through the wood and secure all of that together. So I find that gives it a really nice, clean and sleek look. And then I of course just use yarn to tie them up onto the trellis. So over the course of the next few months, this is going to totally fill in with tons and tons of foliage and tomatoes. And the second part of the tomatoes that's really exciting me is the built-in irrigation. So as you can see here, I've put a header into each one of the beds. And what that's going to do is allow me to change any of the components based on how well they're working over the course of the season. So for my tomatoes, I've actually ran main line directly along them. And what we're gonna do right now is actually punch in some holes right at the base of each of the plants and then add two gallon emitters right there. What will now happen is all of the water will emit out of those two gallon emitters right at the base of the plant. This will ensure that all of the water goes directly into the root zone and there isn't any overspray or wasted water at all. Let's turn it on to see how it's looking. Two, one, two, three, four, five. Water just turned on. And look at that. Oh, thing of beauty. See that? All of it just going right into the base of the plant. No waste whatsoever. And then on the outside of the bed, I use quarter inch drip line with emitters every six inches. And as the temperatures get a little bit warmer this coming week, I'm gonna plant in the basil directly along that drip line so that it gets all the water it needs as well. And as we head to the next piece, just a couple of things to check out. The dianthus is flowering right now. One of my absolute ground covers for sure. The kale, a little bit of a late start, but it's growing really nicely now. And it's just about ready to start getting harvested. And the asparagus, I've now finished harvesting for the season. Had a lot of really delicious asparagus over the course of the early spring. And gonna let it just go to foliage now. Also, one thing that I'm not crazy about in terms of asparagus is just like the amount of space that it requires that then is just blank space. Like all of this soil is just kind of not being put to use right now. So if anybody has some favorite succession plants, or sorry, not succession, favorite companion plants that they do with asparagus, let me know down in the comments. Be curious. But the second thing that's exciting me is the garlic. And as we can see, it has grown super, super well once again this season. And I personally find that when the weather is a little bit cooler in the spring, like this year, it ends up growing a little bit better. It's not rushing to go to scape and then ultimately to head up. It's just kind of taking its time and developing really nicely. These babies here are looking nice. That is a thick garlic stalk. Now, for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you know that I love a little experiment. And so this year I'm experimenting with planting depth. So back in the fall, I split this bed into thirds and right down the middle, I use that as my control to just plant them at the regular four inch depth that I always do. Then on the far right side of the bed, I planted those really like right at the surface, much more similar to what I do with my onions, which are also in the allium family. And of course with onions, you're wanting them to head up. And then on the far left-hand side of the bed, I planted those really deep, at least six inches in depth. And so all of them have grown really well. I'm not sure yet which one has done the best, but we'll find out in about six weeks when we harvest these in mid to late July. The next thing that's gonna happen with them, of course, is the scapes to emerge. I haven't seen any on them just yet. 
take a quick little peek through to see if we can see any starting to emerge. None yet, but I bet in the next 10 to 14 days, we'll start to see the first ones. Now, let's continue along for the third update. And now as we head in that direction, I wanna just quickly show you my dill, which has started to grow. And so I actually don't start any dill seeds whatsoever. I planted some here a couple years ago. I just allow it to grow, go to flower, and ultimately to seed. And then at the end of the season, inevitably some of those seeds fall into the ground here, they overwinter, and then they self-sow as the temperatures get a little bit warmer in the spring. So everything that we're seeing right here has self-sowed, and it's gonna be perfectly timed for my cucumbers, salads, all the things that I'll be enjoying out of the garden. So a fun little tip there. But now continuing on to the third piece that I'm really excited about, and that is my onion bed. So I planted all of these as seedlings back near the beginning of May. And as we can see, they've all taken and they're growing really, really well. And so it's still a little ways until they will be ready to be harvested. And the only piece that I wanted to comment on for them is just the irrigation. And irrigation has been a big theme for me this spring as I redid all of the beds. And so for this bed, I also put a header at the end but now, rather than running any main line, I've only utilized quarter inch drip line with emitters every six inches. And I've played around with a number of different drip lines, and this has hands down been my favorite brand. I believe the name is Agrifim. I'll put it down in the description of this video. But what I've found personally is that it does a really good job of emitting the water consistently all throughout the line. So I'd really encourage you to probably check that one out. And one other tip just on that front, I'm having the most success with drip lines when I keep them less than eight feet. So each of these lines is probably about six feet in length. I'm finding that shorter run to work really, really well. So let's continue along now into the front yard. And as we do so, I always love to just kind of pause to look back at the yard, see how it's all coming along. And I can't wait to see it all fill in over the course of the coming months here. And now the fourth thing that has been really cool to see, really exciting, is this arugula patch and what we're going to do with it as a succession. And so we actually started these seeds back in March and have kind of to my surprise, gotten tons and tons of harvest off of this arugula. But it's getting to the point where it's pretty much just putting out flowers at this point. We're not getting very many more leaves. And so what I'm actually going to do is remove all of this arugula from the garden at this point. And that's gonna open up a couple of square feet. And now as a succession crop, I'm gonna plant a couple of peppers right here. And this is so cool to me because early in the season, we've been able to utilize and maximize this space, but it's now too hot for the arugula, which makes it the perfect time for the peppers to be going into the garden. So it's a really cool way to be growing really from the very earliest parts of the season all the way through till the end. And voila, just like that, we have flipped this space over and we are growing in it once again. We'll be harvesting before we know it. Now, just before we get to some of those flops and fails that I've experienced, I got one more exciting thing to show you. Let's head out to the front for that. And so the fifth exciting thing is what we like to call Squash City. And that is this front slope here. And so a couple of years ago, this was just completely grass, nothing growing in it whatsoever. But then I started experimenting with it, growing some stuff just at the very top. And I discovered that this is hands down my sunniest growing zone and that things grew really, really well in here. So then last year, I converted this whole slope into Squash City. And I built these little pockets. You can see me standing in one right here. There's another one right there, a third one right behind me there. And then we plant the squash into those pockets and basically utilize this slope as a reverse trellis. So they can simply grow down it, produce their fruit, and absorb, of course, all of the energy from the sun. Now, one kind of challenge is that the ground covers that I've put in place here, the ornamental grass, the creeping thyme, it's all actually kind of grown too well over the course of the year. And so over the next week or so, I might end up actually having to split and divide some of these to create a little bit more space for the squash. Now, with that being said, let's dive into a couple of flops or fails that I'm currently experiencing. And the first one is actually right out here as well, and that is morning glory. And it is the absolute bane of my existence. There's some of it popping up right here, and if you don't weed it out pretty much straight away, then it's going to absolutely take off and just kind of swallow up the entirety of your garden. Get out of here. 
Now, fortunately, I have found actually a bit of a solution to it, and it comes back to those ground covers that I was just mentioning. So I've found that they've done a really great job at suppressing the morning glory because there's just no space for it to grow once they're established. So the three ground covers that I've found to be most effective include the ornamental grass, the creeping thyme, and the dianthus that I have in the backyard. So morning glory, an absolute pain in the butt. Let's pop up to the top here to take a look at the next flop. And the second flop or fail has been my blueberry baby right here. I've got no idea why, but it has not put out really any flowers whatsoever this year. Last year I had a really, really amazing harvest off of it, but this year there's nothing happening on it besides the leaves. And right on the other side of the fence, I actually have more blueberry plants right there. They're much younger and smaller, but they're full of flowers developing now into fruit. So if you've got any ideas on what might be happening, why my blueberry is not flowering, please let me know down in the comments. Now let's head into the backyard for the third and final flop. And as we head in that direction, as always, what you see on camera is only part of the story. I've got extra irrigation lines and trellising all over the place. A few boxes that I still haven't filled up, others that I've cleaned up but haven't replanted. And as always, a graveyard of seed cells for next season that has not been organized or cleaned at all. And I share all of that plus this empty bed with you because I don't think there's enough of that showing kind of the other side of gardening, the things that happen beyond the lens. And so if you're feeling like things are maybe a little bit behind or that there's a little bit of a mess on your end, believe me, I'm in the exact same boat as you and that is 100% normal. And now the third and final flop or fail is why on earth is my potato bed still empty? And so I have about 24 potatoes planted in this bed and I can see the first ones just starting to poke up but this is one of those things where I just got them planted really late. Life happens, they got in here a little bit late, and that's why we're not seeing any growth just yet. It means it's gonna be a little bit of a later harvest for potatoes for me, but again, sometimes life just happens. It's been a busy spring for me through April and May, so I think they'll end up coming together. I also have to do the irrigation still in this bed, but that's a future me problem. Now to wrap up the video, let's head to my cut flower bed where I'm gonna show you something that I'm gonna do differently for next season. And this all has to do with dahlias. And so last fall, I did an experiment of overwintering the dahlias directly in the bed versus digging them up, storing them in the garage, and then starting them indoors to get a bit of a head start on the season. And so what we can see at the back of the bed here are the dahlias that I started indoors and they have already been pruned a little bit. They're already more than a foot tall and a couple of them are already beginning to put out their first flowers. But then on the other hand, the dahlias that I left in the ground, they are just now starting to poke through the surface. And on top of that, there's some that didn't survive the winter and that resulted in a couple of blank spots in the garden. Plus all these leaves have been nibbled away at. No damage on the ones that I started indoors and transplanted though. So for next season, I'm gonna make sure that I dig up all of my tubers in the fall, store them inside through the winter and then start them indoors so I can get the head start and ensure that the space is totally filled up when I go to transplant them into the garden. So there you have it. That's the state of my garden at the beginning of June here. I know it's gonna start filling in and coming to life as we get into the warmer months here. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and I'll catch you on the next video.